Bermuda is a beautiful island located in the North Atlantic Ocean, popular for its pink sand beaches, the historic town of St. George, and beautiful scenery. In this video, I'll be sharing 16 things to do in Bermuda, but I want to emphasize that there are so many other things to see and do on the island. These are just a few of your options. The island of Bermuda is less than a three hour direct flight from Toronto, Ontario, but we actually went to Bermuda before the pandemic on a Norwegian cruise from New York. You can also check out my Bermuda travel tips or travel vlog linked in the description below. Now let's get right to it. Here are 16 things to do in Bermuda. You should definitely add them to your itinerary if you're planning a future trip. First up are the Crystal and Fantasy Caves, one of Bermuda's top tourist attractions. Unfortunately, on the day we visited, there was a three hour wait to see the Crystal Cave, so we opted to just see the Fantasy Cave instead. To get in and out of this cave, you have to go down and up the same set of 88 very steep steps. So it's definitely not an accessible attraction. It was interesting to learn about the history of the caves. Two young teenagers actually found the caves while playing a game of cricket in 1907 and it's been a popular attraction ever since. From all of the photos and videos I've seen, I think the Crystal Cave is probably the prettier one. If you're interested in geology and have time to use, then I definitely would add this to your list. Number two is to take the bus. Technically, this is more of an experience and not an attraction, but taking the bus really allows you to see the island and stop where you want along the way. We purchased a day pass for the bus and it was very easy to do and much cheaper than taking taxis around the island. We definitely got our money's worth with all of the rides we took from one end of the island and back. The third thing to do is to eat at the Swizzle Inn. This restaurant is famous for their Rum Swizzle, which is a tropical rum drink with light rum, dark rum, orange juice, and some other ingredients that make it super delicious. We both got the Swizzle Burger and had the options of regular fries or seasoned fries. Don't even give regular fries a look, go straight for the seasoned fries. The restaurant is on the expensive side, as many things are in Bermuda, but we really enjoyed the experience and the fries. St. George is the fourth thing on my list. This part of Bermuda is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It got its name after St. George, the patron saint of England by Admiral Sir George Summers. In this area, you will find little shops, restaurants, a small marina, and the historic King's Square. This is a fantastic part of the city to do a walking tour to see the colonial style buildings, enjoy the square, and take in some history. There are even replicas of the stocks and pillory from the 18th century used for public punishments. We enjoyed walking along the waterfront and not shown here was our quick stop at the Deliverance, a replica of the ship that took Sir George Summers and his men to Virginia after they were stranded on Bermuda. Definitely don't miss visiting this beautiful part of the island. St. Peter's Church is the fifth attraction to see. St. Peter's is the oldest Anglican church outside the British Isles. It is also the oldest Protestant church in use in the New World. It is a cute little chapel at the top of a large hill with many steps, but there's an accessible entrance around the back through the side street. You can pay a small donation to go inside and look around. Definitely worth it. The Lily Bermuda Perfumery is number six on the list. This perfumery has a 90 year history and their fragrances are a reflection of the island's natural beauty. If you're looking for a unique souvenir to remember your trip or just wanna smell some of the lovely perfumes, then stop by. You can only buy Lily Bermuda fragrances in Bermuda or on their website. The seventh activity is to take a ferry ride. Bermuda's ferry routes offer a great way to get around the island and enjoy views from the water. 
There are different routes that operate between the ferry ports on the island. We took a ferry back to the Royal Naval Dockyard and it was a lovely way to see the island. The eighth thing to do is to rent a two-seater electric vehicle. One important thing to know about Bermuda is that you can't rent real cars on the island. You can, however, rent two-seater electric vehicles to explore on your own. Which in my mind, it's kind of the same thing. But if you're looking for a larger vehicle, you'll have to hire a driver, take a taxi, or a private tour to accommodate your group. You can check out the rental options online and see cars like the Twizy, Tazari, Burmy, and even a Hummer. Number 9 is to take a trolley tour to explore the island. You can do trolley tours at the Royal Naval Dockyard and in Hamilton, and possibly even in St. George, but check out the Bermuda Train Trolley website for more details. The 10th attraction is a Clock Tower Mall. This mall is located in the King's Wharf and Royal Naval Dockyard area, so it's a popular stop for guests on cruise ships. There are plenty of souvenir shops, restaurants, and an ice cream shop. We enjoyed browsing here before heading back to our ship. Horseshoe Bay is number 11 on my list. Of all the beaches in Bermuda, Horseshoe Bay has to be the most well-known and popular tourist beach, and for good reason. It's beautiful. There's a large pink sand beach and a lovely cove, and the main attraction are the amenities. There's a restaurant, restrooms, showers, chair and umbrella rentals, and plenty of space to enjoy the beach. Having amenities like this is definitely a perk for tourists and locals alike. And if you like beaches, number 12 on my list is to visit another beach. Bermuda is well known for their beautiful beaches on the island, and I highly suggest visiting John Smith's Bay or any other beach around the island. They may not have the amenities of Horseshoe Bay, but they are just as lovely and way less populated. You could end up with the entire beach to yourself like we did when we were touring around. Number 13 is to visit the Royal Naval Dockyard. We went back to the King's Wharf and Royal Naval Dockyard area to do some shopping and look around before getting back on our cruise ship. This is one of Bermuda's most popular destinations due to the shopping, dining, entertainment, beaches, and you can also find a tourist center and plenty of tour companies as well. The craft market in the Royal Naval Dockyard is number 14 on my list. If you know me, you know I love crafts and I can't pass up a stop at a craft market. This was a great spot to pick up some unique souvenirs made by local artists in Bermuda.
Number 15 is visiting Gibbs Hill Lighthouse. There is a restaurant and gift shop on site and beautiful views of Bermuda below. You can climb up to the top of the lighthouse for a small fee for even better views of the island. It was quite busy when we were there, so we decided to skip the climb and enjoy the views instead. And number 16 is to take an island tour. If you don't feel comfortable exploring the island on your own, or you want to learn more from a guide as you sightsee, you can take an organized island tour. On our last day in Bermuda, we did the Bermuda Island Tour by Minibus and booked this through our cruise ship. It was a nice way to see the highlights of the island in 5 hours and learn more from our local tour guide. And there you have it, 16 things to do if you're planning a trip to Bermuda. But like I said earlier, there are so many other activities and attractions on the island, like exploring the city of Hamilton, taking a catamaran or boat tour, snorkeling, and many others. I hope this video can be helpful if you're planning your own visit to the island. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more travel videos coming soon.